All right, let's do some algebra. For some reason, algebra just hasn't really been my favorite subject in the past, but I mean, hopefully going through all these Jacobson exercises might change my mind. It might not, but we'll see what happens. So anyways, let's start with this first problem of the first section of the first chapter of Jacobson. So we have this really, really simple semi-group, and so all we must do, let's remember what do we need to do, is to prove that S is associative. And when I say S here, I mean, of course, S endowed with this product. Um, but that's that's a lot of words, so I'm not going to do that. And yeah, because once you have associativity, that's what it means to be a semigroup. It's just a set, and you've got a binary operation, and it's associative. So anyways, if A, B, and C are in S, then A, B, C, well, this is just... Well, the operation on the outside goes first, and that's just by our rule. This is C. But now we can multiply on the left, because that's how this works. And so now we can multiply this whole thing on the left again. As desired. So there's that. Next, I claim S has a unit if and only if s equals just the it contains only the element one and so to see this observe that if s contains 1 and we have some element a which is not 1 then 1 is well by definition of the unit it's equal to 1 times a which is equal to a and let's see here the a is not equal to 1 surprise and this is a contradiction. Okay, so this proves that, um, let's see here, this, so certainly if S can, if S is just a singleton set one, then S has a unit, and conversely, if S has a unit, then it has to contain one, or it has to be just a set once, because if you assume for contradiction otherwise, then this thing pops out. Or you could probably do a contrapositive argument, but tomato, potato. So anyways, this is it. That completes the proof.